floss tube. It's 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. Are you ready? Are you already stitching? Um, I have stitched a little bit. I'm going to get back to stitching right after I finish this and get it started processing and uploading. So I'm going to try to keep it brief so that I can get back to stitching. Um, just a quick note, uh, if this is too short for you, I will be having a live tomorrow. I'll be doing a stitch and chat live on YouTube tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a public one, not just, uh, not just patrons, and that's going to be at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, so hopefully that timing works out for the most people. I, it's really hard to catch everybody uh, in the timing, but I wanted to do it Saturday instead of Sunday this week. And I will be stitching, uh, I'll be cross stitching because it's 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. And that usually lasts for an hour, maybe two hours. Um, so if that's something that you want to work and lurk um, or join in chat or whatever, you're more than welcome, please join me. Um, in order to decide what I'm stitching on during that live tomorrow, I've actually put up a poll uh, for my patrons on Patreon. Um, so patrons are picking the stitch tomorrow um, and I'm really excited about that. So I narrowed it down to about five pieces. Um, and if I have time, I'll put a picture somewhere in here um, of the five pieces that I narrowed it down to and they get to choose for me which of those five pieces I will be stitching tomorrow live. So, uh, so that's kind of fun. I'm excited about that. Um, as far as my stitching plans for 24 hours of cross stitch weekend, I have no idea what I'm going to stitch other than the piece for the live tomorrow because that's being decided for me. Uh, I'm going to try to just let my inspiration guide me. Um, I may actually have to pull out all of my whips and try to try to do a sort of Marie Kondo thing and um, find out what sparks joy because I just don't know what to work on. I know I want to stitch, but I don't know what I want to stitch. So yeah. So more about that in a minute. Um, I'm not going to go a lot into um, what I'm watching, what I'm listening to right now. Not listening to any audiobooks actively. Um, I still have that Samantha Irby book to finish. Um, I did just see the Demon Slayer movie and let me say it's fantastic. If you are into anime, um, and especially if you've watched the Demon Slayer series on television, you must watch this movie. It's fantastic. So good. Um, not going to get into the story because it is tied in very much. It follows exactly the moment that we left the characters in the series. Um, so they, they have one season of the show um, that should be available on Crunchyroll as well as um, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, that kind of stuff. There's one season and the moment at which we leave them at the end of the season is the moment the movie picks up. So if I tell you anything about the story, it'll be too much. But it's fantastic. It was awesome. I really enjoyed watching it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. I've also been watching random TV. I'll talk about that next week. I have some happy mail. Let's talk about happy mail. Um, excuse me. I got, um, I actually placed an order. So this is partly a purchase and partly happy mail. Um, so y'all know that I follow Teal Teacup on Patreon. Um, I'm one of her patrons, so I, I get, I'm in her, um, her pin party club, I think is what she's calling it now. So I get an enamel pin and a sticker every month. So that's my happy mail. And this month is super, super cute. So it's Kevin the koala and he is koalified. Can you see that? <laughs> How cute is he? He's so cute. Um, so yeah, Kevin the koala who is koalified. He's just so, he's adorable. So that's April's, um, that's April's pin. Uh, and sticker, which is fabulous. And uh, Gail of Teal Teacup, she's such an amazing artist. Like I love her style. She does all these like um, chunky chibi kind of characters and just these like sad foods and happy foods and all different kind of stuff. I just love her style. Um, and I love um, the fact that, that I can support her in doing what she what she is doing. She actually just finished a Kickstarter for a Ghibli series of pins. Um, and y'all know that I backed that because <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the anime and stuff anyway. So yeah, I backed her, uh, I backed her Ghibli uh, Kickstarter and it's fully funded. It's way fully funded. Um, and I'm really excited for her that she got that level of success out of it. Um, I'm even more excited for me because I get all the fantastic pins and it's going to be really exciting. I can't wait till that haul comes in so I can show you. Um, in the meantime, I did purchase other pins from her. Um, so I got a pack of, um, Adventure Time themed pins. I can only show you a couple of times. So this is um, Jake and Zombie Jake. <laughs> I'm way far away from the camera today. So let's, okay. <laughs> so Zake, Jake and Zombie Jake, if you can see them there, super cute. And then um, I got, I actually already have this keychain 
but the set came with the keychain again, so I have a second of these keychains. So it's um, it's the gender bent gender bent versions on the back, and it's um, the regular versions on the front. Let me let me take this out of the package so you can actually see it. So we've got Jake and Princess Raina Corn. I just realized I did not open up the windows before I started filming, so <laughs> the light is all funky. Um, apologies for that. Um, so Lady Rainicorn and Jake on this side, and then on this side, I can't remember what um, what the male version of Lady Rainicorn's name is, but that's Cake the Cat um, in the gender bent version. So <laughs> it's super cute. And then also um, the enamel pin version with the glitter. I love it. And then there's also this, this one is super cute and funny. This is, I love you everything burrito. It's Jake and his burrito. Awesome. And last but not least, uh, two versions of Lady Rainicorn by herself, um, which was the main reason for getting this pack in the first place. So it's a glitter Lady Rainicorn and a regular Lady Rainicorn. So, I don't know what just fell over. The cat's not something ever, I guess. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah. Um, isn't it cute? So cute. So yeah, um, that's my haul from, uh, from Teal Teacup for now. Uh, there's going to be so much more haul later. Um, and actually, since I'm sitting closer, let me... Uh, let me show you Kevin up close. How cute is he? He's so cute. So cute. Okay. I'm going to pause for a second and go open some curtains so you can see everything a little bit better and I'll be right back. Okay, that should be a little bit better. <laughs> it looks a little bit better in the camera viewer for me. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I was in such a, in such a hurry to, um, to get to filming that I forgot to put any light in the room. And I just noticed that there's a woodchuck in the neighbor's yard. He's like eating the clover over there. Okay, <laughs> I'm so distractible today. Okay, let's talk about, um, or actually one last thing and then I'll talk about whips. So since I was talking all about my um, teal teacup stuff, let me show you this thing that I did. So um, I made I made this spiffy little um, frame, felt framed thing to, um, display some of my teal teacup pins that I already had. Um, so this was this was everything I could find of what I already have. I think this is was my entire collection before I got this new shipment. Um, not entirely sure. I feel like I'm missing some, but I couldn't even tell you where they are. Um, it was convenient that they actually all fit in one frame. <laughs> um, so this is a really inexpensive um, uh, frame that I got on um, Amazon. They come in packs of like four um four different sizes i want to say and they're super easy to use because they have sort of a rubbery um this piece that looks like wood here is actually a rubbery kind of thing that you just um push tightly onto the the inside plastic hoop so it's um it's basically an embroidery hoop um but it doesn't unscrew at the top it's just um <clears throat> it's just held together by the tension and uh, of the uh, the tightness of this hoop on the outside. Um, so I took a piece of felt and I put it inside that inexpensive frame that I got off Amazon. Um, I'll try to remember to put the link in the description for you. Um, just put the, the felt inside the frame and then put the pins in there and you can see on the back they're just uh, they're just pinned on there. <laughs> <laughs> My goal is to eventually turn these all into um, needle minders, but at the moment, um, this at least lets me hang them up so I can actually look at them and see them all the time, which is nice. Um, most of these are my Pin Club monthly um, monthly Patreon shipment. So I think this was the very first one that I got from Teal Teacup, and then Ice Cream was next, I think, and then probably the hot chocolate, um, or actually, I guess the, the bird came out in November. Um, she sent those as the November um, pin club. So this might have been December, and I think the spilled milk was January. So this would be, the pizza was February, the sushi was March, that was the last one. And then these other three I purchased separately. 
So probably what I'll end up doing, especially now that I have Kevin, um, the koala fight koala, um, I'll probably swap him out for at least one of these at the top. And as I get new pin club pins, I'll keep this one for pin clubs. I'll set up another one for other pins that I have, because obviously I have a bunch and I'm going to get a bunch more. So, <clears throat> so that is that. Now let's talk about stitching. <laughs> So um, as far as WhipGo goes, um, I completed my second WhipGo goal this week. Um, so my first goal was to do at least five hours on my celestial design, um, which I think I showed last week or the week before. I did get a total of like 14 hours in on that, so I did pretty good. Um, I have um, I just finished earlier today I've got about three and a half hours towards 24 hours of cross stitch I'll talk more about that in a minute but I um, I actually have stitched what is technically four blocks so I did this double block and I did this block and this block and then I did all of the black outlining um, for these four squares um, or these squares on this line and then all of the squares here except for the one side there so um, <clears throat> technically it's only three squares plus a lot of black back stitching I'm gonna count it as four squares because that double was a real bear um, it took me something like five hours to finish that one block um, and that was a lot so I'm gonna count that towards <laughs> I'm gonna count that as two and then I did two more so I did <laughs> I did a total of four blocks for this month um, also I'm counting the back stitching as part of that effort too so if I hadn't done all that back stitching I would probably try to do at least one more individual block <coughs> excuse me but yeah so I have uh, I have met the goal so I'm I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this one away um, I'm getting a little bit better at doing the um, doing the black work more efficiently, I think, because um, some folks made a suggestion in the group sometime last year about trying to do all of the lines in a certain direction all at one time and then come back and do a different direction and come back and do another direction. And so that's what I've been trying with all three of these blocks. With this one, that went pretty easily because um, <clears throat> this block is not a terribly busy block. I don't That's the third one from the right as you're looking at it, I think. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, it's this one. Um, so that one's not a very busy block. So that one went really, really quickly. The one next to it was um, was quicker than most because it doesn't have a lot of switching lines. So there's a lot of vertical, um, and then there's a really uniform way to do the diagonals, um, and then there's just a couple of horizontal lines. So that went very quickly. So, but I think I'm ready to put this down. Um, it's funny because now I'm, what is this? Five, 10, 14 weeks. 14 weeks into 2020, which puts me almost at the point we are now in 2021. <laughs> I'm still behind, even if I'm counting it for this year. Um, but yeah, and I got my, uh, my peppermint purple needle liner down there. Um, incidentally, um, Claire at Peppermint Purple just released a new peppermint purple needle liner, which I might have to buy. Um, but yeah, so, <clears throat> so there we go. That's my, that's my WhipGo progress. Um, this is all the stitching that I've done this week um, because I haven't I haven't done a lot of stitching. I've done a little bit of knitting. <clears throat> I've been in that space where I've just not been feeling really, I've just not known what to craft. Like I've wanted to stitch, but I haven't known what I wanted to stitch. So I have, it's, it's a weird headspace. Um, but I did get my goal in on this. I still have obviously a few days left in the month if I want to work on this a little bit more, but I think I'm gonna, I'm satisfied with what I've done this month, so I'm ready to put it away. Um, <clears throat> so WhipGo, WhipGo, I feel like you're all probably familiar with WhipGo, um, but just in case you're not, WhipGo is, um, was the idea of Jessie Marie Seitz um, from Jessie Marie Does Stuff, and um, she came up with the idea <clears throat> as a way of incentivizing herself to work on uh, old whips, um, old works in progress. And so then she extended that to let other people participate and join. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's helping me really get a lot of focused work in on pieces that I already have going. So uh, I really like that. And uh, I'm excited to see what's going to get drawn for next month to see what I'll be focusing on for May. Um, I'm also 
Uh, I also participate in 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, that's hashtag 24 H O C S 24 hours of cross stitch. Now that is the brainchild of, um, Jen Lee of corks and stitches. <clears throat> and 24 hours of cross stitch is another, you know, just, um, fun event that's designed to help you work on your stuff uh, to give you sort of a community aspect to uh, encourage you to work on things that you want to work on work on cross stitching that you want to work on it also is a great way of uh, helping you set aside time specifically for cross stitching so the way that 24 hours of cross stitch works is that um, three times a year there's a 24 hours of cross stitch weekend and the idea is that you should you you try to stitch 24 hours within the space of that weekend. Now, some people are team no sleep, um, and that means that they will try to stitch for 24 hours straight. I'm not team no sleep. I can't do that. I have difficulty enough stitching when I am at full capacity. <laughs> I can't even imagine after that 10th or 12th hour of stitching how I would manage to, to keep putting the X's in the right place. I just, I don't have it in me. Um, I actually, to this point, have still not actually completed 24 hours of stitching throughout a weekend because it's a lot, it's, you know, as often as I'll sit down and I'll stitch for hours and hours, if I have a plan to sit down for 24 hours, even if it's not 24 hours straight, I find that it's really, really difficult to get 24 hours in. At that point, it feels like a job, and I think that's part of why it's, part of why it's so difficult because um, what I've tried to do the last few times is break it up into three eight-hour shifts basically um, so do eight hours of stitching Friday Saturday and Sunday but even that eight hours of stitching is a lot of stitching and it's hard to fit eight hours of stitching into a day because you have to do breakfast and you may have to spend time with your family and you may have to do chores around the house and you may have to you're definitely gonna have to eat other food during the day lunch and dinner and stuff like that and even when I've planned ahead to try to have stuff that's easy to fix and ready to go, it just feels like it takes so much time to do all of these maintenance things like cleaning and eating and all that sort of stuff. So fitting in eight hours of cross stitching time can be really stressful. Um, so the last couple of times I've tried to just really tone it down and not force myself and not be so stressed about getting eight hours in a day. Um, so really I just do it to see how much stitching I can get done. Um, and in the past I've been really regimented. I've, you know, I've, spun wheels to determine what I was going to work on. I've, I've stated up front, I'm going to work on this piece, this piece, and this piece. Um, I really prefer, I get less, or I find that I get less stressed when I just decide I'm going to participate, I'm going to stitch something, and I will stitch whatever I feel like stitching. Um, for me, that's what works the best. Um, <clears throat> and as I said, with my uh, peppermint purple, I already have three and a half hours in for the weekend, so that's good. Um, I'll be continuing to stitch as soon as I get done with this video. So <laughs> I just haven't decided what I'm going to stitch. I do feel like uh, Dark Queen might get some love this weekend. Uh, maybe also Blackbird Fractor. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Hopefully for Floss Tube next week, I'll have a lot of whips to show you, um, or at least a lot of progress on one whip to show you. Um, cause I feel like I haven't had a lot of stuff like actual cross stitching to show you lately. So, um, I'm hoping that that, that will change this weekend. And certainly, um, if you want to join me while I stitch tomorrow morning, um, that would be great too. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's it for 24 hours of cross stitch plans. My plans are basically not to have plans other than stitching. Um, so the only thing, the only hard and fast thing I have set up for this weekend, um, other than stitching is to do the live tomorrow, but I'm gonna be stitching while I'm live. So that works out really well. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so that's the weekend for me. And then next week we'll get the new WIPGO draws. That'll help me sort of decide and solidify what I'm gonna do for May. Lots of folks are talking about mania plans. I'm not participating in mania this year uh, for a couple of reasons. The main one being I just don't want to start a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm not in a starting mood. Um, I'm sure at some point I will be, but right now is not that time. So I don't want to do anything that is centered around doing a bunch of new starts. So that's that's the main thing. Um, the other thing is I just don't I don't feel like um, participating in something that uses the word mania in that way and that's not a judgment on anybody else that's a personal choice um <clears throat> just because um just because it's a personal choice uh, if you're curious as to why i'm certainly happy to discuss that i don't need to we don't need to take up a bunch of time with it here but um but yeah the main reason is just i don't want to do a bunch of new starts um so yeah that's that's why i won't be doing mania um but i may participate in hashtag monogamy 
Um, and I think that's, I think Michelle came up with that on her own. I don't think that's something that she, um, she got from somebody else. Um, but I know that she's talked about participating in monogamy. Um, and she's actually going to be doing Marina May, a hashtag Marina May, um, because she is working on a fantastic piece of artwork um, that is the cover art from Moretta, Dragon Lady of Pern, which is an Anne McCaffrey novel. Um, and Anne McCaffrey is one of my all time favorite authors. I'm like super jazzed to see how that whip goes. Um, but monogamy is basically just instead of picking a whole bunch of different pieces or starting a whole bunch of new things, um, <clears throat> you, you just pick one piece and um, or what Michelle is doing is she's going to pick like one piece to work on and she'll do her whip go stuff and then she'll do one piece one other focus piece that she'll work on for the rest of the month and that seems like a good idea to me so I might do that um, I'll decide over the weekend if something feels like it's calling to me excuse me it might be a good time to pull out Gamer Nouveau again um, I haven't worked on her since uh, January and May is my birthday month and that is like my unicorn piece um, so I might bring back that bring back that for May and bring back Gamer Nouveau and uh, work on her as a monogamy piece so that might be my plan for for May do my whip go goals and then um, put some stitchy time into Gamer Nouveau that sounds like a good idea actually <laughs> now that I'm saying it so we'll see I might stick to that um, I will I will make a more solid plan for next floss tube because uh, next floss tube will be uh, April 30th um so then so may will start the next saturday so okay let's do purchase yeah let's do purchases and then i'll let you go because i want to get some stitching in um <clears throat> first purchase is my Fortnite fabric of the month and this looks really gorgeous the color is called ballet so i'm in there um Expensive Rich Colorway Club. Expensive Rich um, is the opalescent fabrics. Um, and I get a fat eighth. So this is smaller than your typical uh, fat quarter. <clears throat> but it's sparkly. Look at that color. It's really bright in here now, so it is getting a little bit washed out. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous um, white lavender mixture. I love the modeling in this piece. This would be perfect for um, a flowery kind of design. And actually, I just happened to think, so there's there's an iris cross stitch piece. I think I've talked about it a couple of times. Um, the designer, I wanna say is smart cross stitch. I could be misremembering that. Um, if I remember to bring it out when I actually talk about it at some point, um, I'll have to check the size on it because if it's small enough, and I don't think it's a huge piece, um, but I have to look at the actual stitch count and if it's small enough, I think this would be a gorgeous piece to stitch that on. But I will have to check. I'll have to check. I also need to check and see how much full coverage it really is because um, it's been a while since I took the chart out to look at it. <clears throat> so I can't remember if it's a full coverage or if there's background that you can see. So assuming that there's background in the the actual stitch and it's not full coverage I think that gorgeous lavender lilac background would be beautiful with the iris piece that I want to I want to stitch so yeah I might already have a plan for this one um, I feel like I already bought the flosses for that but I honestly can't remember I've had the chart since last year because um, <clears throat> I always buy when I find an iris chart that I really really love I always buy it. Um, I haven't started stitching on any of them, <clears throat> but I always buy it because my mother's name was Iris. Um, so irises are just about my favorite flower at this point because they remind me of her. So uh, that's the fabric. And then the other purchase, I'm super excited about this purchase. So um, I went to the 805 Stitchers Etsy shop um, and I forget what prompted me. I, I think that I just saw that she had posted some new bags or something. So I went to her shop and I got a bag and I'm like, this bag is so cute. Oh my gosh. I haven't even opened it yet. As you can tell, cause it's still in the, in the tissue paper and I can't get into the bag. Okay. So this was so, so cute when I saw it on her Etsy shop. I was like, I must have this. 
So, okay, here's the front. I'll show you the front. And she always she always does a button um, that is or a, a needle minder that's sort of a button style that's made out of the fabric that the bag is made out of. Um, and she sends a thank you note. This is, I believe, Tara at the uh, the 805 Stitcher. And now look at the back. Look at the back. Isn't it so cute? How cute is this? It's pandas eating dim sum. And some of it is like sushi and some of it is dumplings. And there's some like um, tempura shrimp and stuff in there. They're just eating all the different things. And it's, um, it's so cute. It's so cute. I couldn't get over it. So yeah, so here's some sushi over here and we've got pandas eating ramen and we've got pandas eating, um, this one's eating a big old um, pork bun. Um, and just, this one's got like a, a tempura plate there. So some tempura shrimps um, and some noodles and just like, it's just so cute. I can't get over how cute this is. And I was like, you know what? When I finally find when I finally decide on what I'm going to stitch for um, hashtag stitch Asia, what would be better for hashtag stitch Asia than a bag that has pandas eating dim sum? Like, how, <laughs> how could you get better than that? It's just so cute. So yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a little kid over this bag, but it was just the cutest thing. And I was literally, Adam was driving, I was in the car. And I was looking at Etsy on my phone and I saw this bag and I was like, oh my gosh, it's pandas eating sushi. I have to have the pandas eating sushi. Um, so I bought it immediately. <laughs> and I was so overjoyed. It's just the cutest thing ever. I love her bags anyway. These are some fantastic vinyl front bags. Um, her quality is just amazing. She's got these super sharp corners um, and the vinyl is a nice, uh, it's a thick enough vinyl that it doesn't get lots of wrinkles and stuff in it from being folded, but it's thin enough that it's not real stodgy and, um, and uh, you know, thick enough that it's, it's not pliable. Um, and she just makes the best bags. I love these bags. So <clears throat> she is incidentally, if you, if you aren't aware, the 805 Stitcher is usually who makes um, the bags that uh, Stephanie at Lindy Stitches does the special edition bags that go with her charts. Um, so that's how I learned about the 805 Stitcher and I love buying other bags from her because they're just so fantastic. So I just had to share that with you because I thought it was so cute. Um, so yeah, you can find her the, the 805 Stitcher on Etsy if you would like um, a cute bag. I don't know if she still has, excuse me, I don't know if she still has the panda with dim sum, um, but it's worth a check because it's so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Okay, folks, um, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I will have WIPCO plans for you next week because um, the draws will have been made. Um, I'll also talk more about specific plans for May. Um, I want to do something special because May is my birthday month. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do by special. Um, I haven't figured that out yet, but I want to do something special um, for next month. Um, I just have to figure out what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I'll have more plans and, uh, and that sort of stuff for you next week. Um, hopefully I'll have a lot of whips to talk to you about next week. And uh, yeah, we'll do all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna let you go. I hope you have some great and fun plans for uh, 24 hours of cross stitch. And even if you don't, um, then you, know, you can certainly go to the um, Facebook page and cheer on everybody else who's participating in 24 hours of cross stitch because that's fun to see everybody posting their whips and everything on Facebook as well. So. <sighs> Okay, breathe, and now I'm gonna go cross stitch. <laughs> hope you've had a great week. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope I'll see you tomorrow in the live chat. And even if I don't, I will see you again sometime next week. And in the meantime, make sure you stay hydrated. I'm definitely trying to do that. Make sure you take your meds and some vitamins. Be good to yourself. And remember that good enough is good enough. And I'll see you again next time. Have a great one.